So I'm Dr. Sachin Jadhav and uh, I'm the group in charge for uh, hematology and uh, bone marrow transplantation in Glen Eagles uh, Global Group. I'm based out of uh, our Bangalore facility and uh, we try to take care of uh, the hematology and bone marrow transplant programs across the various hospitals in our group. Bone marrow transplant is uh, when we change the bone marrow, logically speaking. Now, bone marrow is what is present inside the bones and that is a factory where all the blood cells are manufactured, they are created. What is interesting is inside the bone marrow, we have stem cell and this stem cell is like a seed. Just like the seed of a tree gives rise to flowers and fruits and branches, similarly the stem cell gives rise to red cells, white cells, platelets. So when we talk of bone marrow transplant, what we are actually changing, what we are actually transplanting is the stem cell. So it is actually a stem cell transplant to regenerate the bone marrow in some patients. Bone marrow transplantation as a, a modality of treatment uh, started in the world in the late 1970s. The successful transplant started happening in the late 1970s. Although many doctors had attempted the treatment way before this, but there was very little success. Primarily, the, the research and uh, uh, the success in treatment therapeutics started happening in the US. Uh, that is in Fred Hutchison Cancer Research Center in Seattle. This is where initial success was seen and as doctors around the world realized that it is possible to successfully change bone marrow, then various other centers around the world started taking it up. In India, the treatment came in about 10 to 15 years ago and uh, uh, the first transplant was done in uh, Tata Medical Center, Tata Cancer Hospital in, in Mumbai. But a systematic program was uh, created in Christian Medical College, CMC in Vellore, Tamil Nadu. Today, if you look at it, then around the world, there are over 1,500 to 2,000 hospitals which are doing good work in stem cell transplant. In India, however, because uh, this is a reasonably new field and uh, uh, accessibility to this treatment has grown in the next, uh, in the last five to seven years. Because of that, what we see is there are about 30 to 35 centers which do bone marrow transplant and out of these there are about 10 to 15 hospitals which are doing good numbers and giving good, reasonably good outcomes as well. The success rate is good. So if we compare population wise, there are 1500 plus centers in the world but our country which has one seventh the population of the world has only 15 to 20 good centers. When transplantation was initially attempted, what happened is the recipient's body would reject the donor stem cells. That was one of the biggest challenges in the beginning. Now today we are at a point where rejection is only 5%. In 95% of our patients, the new bone marrow takes up, the graft takes up and it starts functioning. Subsequently, a newer problem came up as transplants became successful. The newer problem was that the new graft which has come from a stem cell, which has come from a donor, the new graft, the new bone marrow would start attacking the recipient's body. And that complication is called GVHD. GVHD earlier used to take lives of almost 100% of patients. Today, it happens in only 10% bad GVHD which is life threatening. That is another improvement which has happened in the last 5 years. But the biggest improvement which has happened in transplantation is the ability to transplant even when the patient and donor are not perfectly matched. That is the biggest advancement in the last five years. And what are the challenges that still exist? The challenges that exist are obviously 
like I said, 10% of patients still have GVHD, 5% still reject. But more than that, the biggest problem, especially in our country, is infections. Our patients, when we are transplanting the bone marrow, their immunity goes down to zero, literally zero. And they suffer because of infections, more so because infections today bacteria are multi-drug resistance they don't respond to antibiotics that is our biggest challenge today in terms of treatment that's the medical part the non-medical part which also raises uh, issues in in transplanting are socio-economic now there are so many patients who need this treatment but in our country where insurance penetration is very low where government support is minimal in terms of financial support for high-end treatment in that what happens is the entire treatment is done by out-of-pocket expense majority of the patients are not able to financially fund their own treatment so affordability is a big issue. The other problem which is unique to developing countries like ours is teamwork. That is a big challenge. Conventionally and the way things are there in our country today, we have doctors who function individually, who may have a team but that team consists of juniors. We do not have teams the way we have them abroad where there are four, five, six, ten doctors who are equally qualified, equally good in their work, working together as a team to give the best outcome to every patient. At Glenigal's Global Hospital, we believe that the primary outcome that we look for is how many patients get cured, what quality of treatment is given, what are the outcomes and what is the patient experience throughout the journey of treatment? All of these are very difficult treatments, challenging therapies. So what we have tried to do at our centers is try to support the patients by creating a team, not only of doctors, but of social workers, good nursing staff, good housekeeping staff, and create the entire ecosystem to give a fantastic experience and medical outcome to each and every patient and relative. We build large teams. We build large teams across various specialities, across all of our hospitals. We try to take in good doctors who have had good training, who have the right ethical and team-oriented mindset, who work for the patients. They are not working for personal gain. That is not the primary driving force in our team. And then all of us together give the best possible outcome. All of this cannot be done without the right infrastructure. Actually, none of this can be done. We need the infrastructure. We need the current technology, the equipment, the support system from the diagnostic side, the pathology, the laboratories, the blood banking. We have worked over the years to create correct network, teams, infrastructure to give the best outcome. Well, I think five years is a short timeline. What I would rather look at is, is what we achieve in the next five years so that we can become better in the next 10 years. In the next few years, we will increasingly see that more and more doctors are trained. They go to various parts of the country and they create the facilities, the infrastructure and the teams to give good outcome. What we really want to look at, however, is whether there is standardization in treatment. We need the treatment to be standardized. Every patient, every clinical issue, whether big or small, nursing issues, how do the nurses work, how does the housekeeping staff work, what kind of medicines are used. Everything needs to be standardized so that there is uniformity and we continue to have clinical outcomes which are at par with any developed country.